Welcome back to Arena Scab, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you so much for coming in for the second video in our series. Um, today we're going to be uh, dealing with something a little bit uh, different than the first video. Uh, if you watched the first video, we dealt with a Dream Trawler deck that um, is a pretty dominating deck, uh, as I said in that video. Pretty, pretty good to about Platinum 2, maybe 1. You know, good players might be able to even take it all the way to Diamond. Uh, but I'm not sure that it would get you into Mythic. So today, I wanted to do, uh, show you a, a deck that uh, that I put together, and it's probably a relatively familiar deck to anybody who's played MTG Arena for any length of time, or at least a version of it that's pretty similar. Um, we're going to go in here and, and show you. Again, I, uh, I'm great at naming decks, so this one's called New Deck 28. Uh, uh, but let's go in here and see what this, what this bad boy's made out of here. So as you can see, we're, we're, we're just talking about a good old-fashioned mono-red aggro deck. Now these are um, <laughs> sort of loved and hated across the MTG uh, arena community uh, because they, uh, they're they kind of touted for not being an intelligent person's deck, uh, but uh, because they they just hit hard. Uh, but, but I would argue that it, it takes some thinking, it takes some reasoning and, and expectation uh, but there's also, you know, a very good reason as to why uh, these deck win. These decks win, uh, and and that is that you know you can hit hard um, and and fast. Uh, and and one thing uh, that that jumps out on this deck that you might not see very often in mono red is this shadow spear. Now everybody knows that uh, you know mono red's fault is is of course there's no life gain. Now this can prove really really valuable uh, uh, when paired with the right uh, creature uh, to give you some life gain and get some of that back especially if you're lucky enough to get it into perhaps in a, a annex that's been bolstered up uh, and then combine that even with an Embercleave I mean that's pretty much a, a, a showstopper there uh, so you know you rely on these early guys to kind of get out there um, as, as you may know fireblade charger can be kind of tricky because he does uh, damage uh, when he dies uh, equal to its power now I like to use that uh, along with these uh, um, uh, Rimrock Knights yeah the uh, Rimrock Knights because a lot of times um, I'll attack with fireblade charger um, if they've got a you know a uh, three cost uh, or a three uh, a health creature out there um, and, and if they're going to block it and kill it I'll boost him and oftentimes I can kill the creature that's blocking it and then afterwards I can do damage uh, to an adjacent creature or even uh, the player themselves uh, which which when it dies it would be a three so you can do three damage it's not something that uh, some people expect uh, another little sneaky uh, sucker on this guy is a uh, Re relic robber now Relic Robber has haste, um, and, and so if you get it out there and you can get it to hit, um, it creates this 0-1 Goblin Construct that, uh, that can't block, but every single turn it does one damage. So every time you can get Relic Robber to do damage to the, to the creature, it creates one of these things. And those can be kind of nasty, a little bit of a game changer, especially if you're able to combine Relic Robber with... Uh, uh, Embercleave because of course that gives a double strike so if it's able to do damage twice it will produce two of the goblin constructs at the same time um, so again a little, little bit of a pain in the butt for them to deal with uh, and then you got you know your classics Rimrock Knight, Kargan Im Intimidator, um, Robber of the Rich, uh, Thorbane for a little boost um, I put Shatter Skull Smashing in there just to be able to deal with maybe multiple small uh, creatures uh, I do throw Dwarven Mine in there. It's not, um, I guess, ne necessarily that common, uh, but uh, I find that you know, with as many mountains as this relies on, uh, it can give you that one creature that you might need to uh, throw out um, Ember Cleave. Uh, like if you've got three lands on the board, and then you need one more creature to be able to attack, uh, oftentimes uh, that that can get it done. Uh, and I know a lot of people use Annex for the same thing. If, if, if the board gets wiped or if a creature gets crushed, you still have a creature to attack and be able to uh, dispatch Embercleave. So um, we're going to take this right in uh, to the game. And we're, we're actually going to go right into standard rank. Um, right now, uh, just real quick, 
On my profile, I'm at 98% Mythic. Um, as you guys uh, will see with this channel, I don't edit the videos. If I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. And I don't mess around with uh, just picking out the games that I win, like a lot of YouTube channels do. Uh, so it'll give you a real uh, idea about what these decks can do now. This deck, I think the statistics, my personal statistics is about a, almost a 70% win rate uh, against decks at this level. Um, and uh, I think the online statistics for red deck wins in general is, is about 60%. So, you know, we're doing a little better. Okay, so <clears throat> dealing with the, the draw here, good hand. Um, I'd love to see another land in there, but realistically, we got some control. I can get Fervent out right away, and then I can boost him up with Rimrock if I need to. And then we've got a few turns before we get Annex out there. So we'll keep this up and see what happens. Let's get Fervent out there right away and just hit for one. See what he's going to be pulling out here. Little Fabled Passage. So we know he has to sack that to bring out a land, so he won't be able to do anything at least for one turn. Now the decision comes here, um, do I put out Rimrock Knight or do I uh, use his boost ability? And honestly, I think I'm going to go ahead and put him out uh, just because the extra damage that I can do isn't really warranted uh, for not having another creature. Uh, out there, so let's just get another guy out there and see what uh, we can do. Especially since we got this next mana that'll let us put out an annex. So he's sitting on a Lotus Cobra, and I think I'll go ahead and put Annex out there. He'll probably block the Rimrock Knight, but if we have an option to get rid of that Lotus Cobra, we sure, certainly sh should, so he can get the mana reboots there. And because Ramrock got boosted to four, he'll actually create two one ones uh, for Annex, so that's pretty valuable. Hopefully, he'll throw out some control here, so we can get Relic Robber out there and just hit him for two and put out one of those uh, Goblin constructs. We'll see what he does here. All right, scavenging ooze. And he's going to sack right away. Okay. So in that case, what we'll probably do is just go ahead and fire prophecy that. Because we don't want to let scavenging lose sit out for very long. And we'll go ahead and get rid of one of these relic robbers and pull out a duke card. See what we can do. Now since I don't have anything, I can't put this out because I don't have enough mana, I'll go ahead and boost up Annex and do as much damage as I can right away. Again, we're looking for a little control. We want him to get rid of one of our creatures. Any one of them would be fine. Because if we can get Relic Robber out there and attack, then that's pretty much the game. See, that's what we wanted to see. You know, even though that gets rid of our Annex, now we can drop out our Relic Robber and he can't do anything about it. And we can hit him for all that damage and create the Goblin that'll just sort of keep hitting him over and over again. Drop out our last creature here and hope he doesn't have a board wipe. That's really what we got to sit on. And that's the game. So, you know, and that Relic Robber is a... Uh, he's a beast. Um, and and it's, it's all about deploying these creatures at the right time. Um, and and, uh, and and getting getting the hits where you need them. All, oftentimes, people assume that with with uh, red deck wins, that uh, it's all about just you know throw your creatures out there and just hit you know. And and that's really not what it's about. There's there's quite a bit of strategy there, and uh, you know there's some things that are left to the wind, but you know uh, that's the nature of the beast with uh, with any of these decks. So. So that was a good example of it performing well. Um, you know, that's kind of what you want to see. Uh, I think we'll do another game here and uh, same deck, standard rank. Um, see uh, see how it performs again uh, against somebody else. I find that this deck performs really, really well against Mono Green, like that last deck was, because Mono Green just 
typically isn't fast enough. Now we're going up against number 1170 here. Um, and uh, and so I'm assuming it'll be a little harder. Lurus of the Dream Den companion decks usually are pretty powerful. Now sitting on this, I'm just not sitting on enough mana to be able to keep this. Um, I, I just can't assume that I'm going to get the mana I need, so I've got to mulligan that. And uh, <laughs> I get stung again. So we're just going to have to keep this, and this might be a good example of what happens when you don't do it right. So um, I think I'll get rid of Robber. Now on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out um, Fervent Champ, shoot him once. I'll kind of show you, at least it'll be a good example for me to show you kind of the Shadow Spear combination here. It's uh, relatively simple, but one of the things about <clears throat> Shadow Spear is uh, normally it takes two to equip, so you know you got to drop it for one and then hit it for two, but with Fervent Champion, the thing about that card that's kind of nice is um, it, it doesn't, any, any equip abilities cost three less to activate, so it doesn't cost anything. So when I put it out there, and then I can immediately attach it for absolutely nothing. And then I can hit for two, and it's just a little life gain, because he'll block it with Ruin Crab, because it won't kill it. But, uh, yeah, we'll see where that goes. And I got that Dwarf in mind, but nah, I'm not sure that's going to be enough unless I get another land. This looks like it's going to be a mill deck with Ruin Crab out. Um, and, and as you saw, he scanned over my lands to make sure they're tapped, wanted to see what they did before he went in for a block. So he's going to be a pretty careful player. And the Ruin Crab, you know, the mill decks against uh, Red Deck wins, they, they do okay, but realistically, they're oftentimes too slow to get there if you've got the right mana. Now, I'm not sitting on great mana here, and uh, and that's that's going to hurt me. But um, uh, if, if you have the right mana, and like I could get, you know, Annex out next, um, you know, Bone Crusher Giant, maybe one of his creatures in addition to the first strike that Fervent Champion offers, get rid of that. Uh, I could get Bone Crusher, Annex, and Fervent Champion out, and then, uh, and then I'm sitting pretty good on hitting it so okay so there's my other mana now uh, this this Vantress gargoyle if you're not familiar with that it can only block unless he has four cards in hand. now he has four cards so he can block with that now my hope is that he would block with that because if he does then i'm going to bone crusher giant that uh on the instant stop damage and then i'll get first strike so that'll kill off the Vantress gargoyle uh immediately uh, but if he doesn't block it then i'll throw out annex of the hardened forge and uh Kind of go from there. Which he did not do. So we'll throw out Annex and uh, just kind of keep moving forward with the pattern. Now the good thing about Vantress is they can't attack unless uh, unless we have seven or more cards in my graveyard. So um, he's going to get there pretty quick with, with two Ruin Crabs out. Now if I get another land, I can technically Ember Cleave. Um, maybe, hopefully, he'll attack with that Vantress Gargoyle. That's the hope, because um, then, then it wouldn't be available for blocking, uh, which it's not now anyway, because he doesn't have four cards in the hand. So Let's see what we get, and that's what we wanted to see. So we're going to go ahead and attack with everything, and we'll see what he... See, he's got a Thieves' Guild, and, and that's because it's got... Um, Seven or eight cards or more. It's got uh, pluses and plus two, plus one, and it's got death touch. But death touch doesn't work if you got first strike, um, which is kind of awesome. That's one of the more advantage ad advantageous things that this offers. So if he blocks with it, like he's going to, then uh, let's see what he does here. He might have to make a decision depending on if he blocks with Vantress Gargoyle. Okay, he doesn't. So it's a pretty easy decision. We'll Ember Cleave Annex. Now that gives it first strike, which means that it does damage to the Thieves Guild Enforcer before it does damage to it. So that means it negates the Death Touch and doesn't do anything. And now we'll get a good two hit damage off of it and bring him down to five. 
which is a good thing. So we could take a hit from everything he's got right now and still have no problems. Uh, unless he's got some removal for Annex, it's going to be a pretty hard win at this point. Some more landfall milling me out. 17 in the graveyard. See what happens. And he's just going to bring that over. Okay. So that should be game. I mean, he can block with quite a bit, but uh, let's just see what he does here with it. So he's going to block that, assuming, I think, that he can sacrifice it, but that's just going to be game because he he doesn't realize, of course, that Annex has Trample with Ember Cleave, so it's just going to do the damage anyway. Yeah. So he must not have understood the mechanics of it, um, this is my guess, thinking that he could block it and then sacrifice it, and then it would be um, damage not done. You know, a lot of people think that. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's another win route with this game, uh, of course, is the classic Ember Cleave. Um, and, you know, and I would say, honestly, that Annex is, is, most, is the most likely receiver of Ember Cleave, in addition to uh, Bone Crusher Giant, if he's out there. Um, I'll see it on smaller things if they have to, but it's usually just to try to hit the win at the end. Um, you know, and there you go. So, uh, so yeah, there it is. I'm going to just pull up the deck... Uh, again here for you so that you can pause it on the screen and uh, take a look at this um, deck list if you want and, and reproduce it and see what you can get done with it you know um, I want to think about if there's anything else I want to tell you about the deck I, I don't think so uh, yeah I mean pretty st pretty straightforward kind of deck um, one thing to keep in mind, you know, a lot of times when you're dealing with mono red, I guess, is that when you think about your control and your instance, it's oftentimes just, okay, can I get rid of this thing? But you want to be mindful of the fact that Fire Prophecy allows you to put one card from your hand to the bottom of your library and then draw a card, which can really help you if you're sitting on, you know, a mana starvation or even a mana flood. Um, you know, if you need to get rid of uh, some small creatures, if you're looking for... If you're kind of looking for annex or something, it can kind of help you out in that regard. Um, since you're not, you know, you're not dealing with any scrylands or or, or uh, any anything like that to kind of see what you've got in the pile. Um, and then another thing I just mentioned is don't don't forget about Rimrock Knight. I mean, he can't block, so he's limited in that regard. But um, w when you're dealing with two lands on the board and you have the option to boost a creature, a lot of people take it because they want they want to use up the adventure on it, you know, before they put it out, because that, that's where you think you get the most value out of that card, and oftentimes that's true, <clears throat> but when you're when you're trying to get creatures out there fast, so that, you know, you could possibly uh, put Embercleave out quicker, because of course, as, as, as you can read from the card here, Embercleave can be deployed if you have three open lands and three attacking creatures, and, and that's the first time in which it can be deployed. Uh, but that can be particularly dangerous if, if let's say, you know, you've got Rimrock Knight out there, a Fervent Champion, and maybe even just a little Fireblade Charger, <clears throat> because Fervent Champion is going to boost Rimrock Knight to a 4-1, and then you put Ember Cleave on there, now he's a 5-2 with Double Strike, you know, so that, that can make him pretty dangerous. So don't, don't forget about Rimrock Knight, he's actually a little better than you think. Um, it's kind of interesting... I did a, just, a, just a little anecdote, but I did a thought experiment uh, the other day, and I was thinking about what is the most damage that you can do on turn two. And I encourage you to take a look uh, at my theory here and, and comment in, in the comments if you, if you can think of anything that would do more. Uh, but as I understand it, I believe that the most damage you could do in turn two with any deck, and, and I'm not saying it's a particular advantage, but it is any deck, uh, is to, uh, on turn one, put out a red land and put out Fervent Champion. Hit for one, don't don't hit for one, whatever. And, and this is, of course, absolutely theoretical. They have no responses. They just put out, a, you know, whatever. But uh, you get the right hand. You put out Fervent Champion. And then on turn two, you put out another land. And you put out Fervent Champion again. So you've got two Fervent Champions. Then you attack. 
and that will boost both of them to two, and then you boost it with um, Rimrock Knight, um, which uh, would then uh, increase it to, to seven. Um, so, you know, uh, one of them would do five and one of them would do two. And, and I think, um, and, and I, I could be wrong about it, but I think that that's the most damage that you can do on turn two, um, you know, just, just as a thought experiment. But if you got any other combos that, I, I was kind of curious, like, what's the most damage in any card, any deck, any possibility that you could do on turn two? Um, and in, in my infantile thinking, I think, I think that's it, but I'm not sure. So, um, yeah post in the comments if you got anything i want to thank you guys for watching the second video in the in the in the channel and uh, if you like this like and subscribe um most of my videos like i said will be educational i want to talk to you guys about um uh, you know what these cards are what the combinations are and, and kind of the theory behind them uh and then also play some games and and uh hopefully be entertained in the process this is uh arena scab signing off uh, thank you guys and hey have a great day